A Storm of Swords, John 4. Ghost was gone when the wildlings led their horses from the cave. Did he understand that about Castle Black? John took a breath of crisp morning air and allowed himself to hope. The eastern sky was pink near the horizon and pale gray higher up. The sword of the morning still hung in the south, the bright white star in its hilt blazing like a diamond in the dawn. But the blacks and grays of the darkening forest were turning once again to greens and golds, reds and russets. And above the soldier pine and oaks and ash and sentinels stood the wall the ice pale and glimmering beneath the dust and dirt that packed its surface. As uh, we've been talking a little bit here before we recorded, um, you know, I kind of had a few points pulled up here and then we are kind of just going to be doing a bigger discussion because I think it's hard to, I, initially I wanted to talk about a specific character, Edric Dane, and his per his role, perhaps, in Winds of Winter. But I think we might just have to expand this conversation we're having here to a house Dane in yeah. Winds of Winter. And are we overlooking the importance of a house that many think are gone? Is an important that these this they might be incredibly important in the story going forward. Yeah, the, the number of times that House Dane is reflected upon is interesting. Uh, Sir Arthur Dane is a big deal. He's pivotal to the Tower of Joy. Ashara Dane is pivotal. They're, these are characters mentioned in a Game of Thrones early in George's mind. Um, as you mentioned, Edric or, or Ned Dane is there with the Brotherhood Without Banners and is important and is now leading possibly the, the better half or the better version of them. Uh, back. I mean, he, he disagrees with what's happening currently in the series. It's interesting that they are, there's so few members. I mean, what the heck? You even have Dark Star, Gerald Dane in there as well. So what, who are these individuals? Why are they so important? And, and the major thing, I guess we sometimes forget, I mean, Ashara Dane, you think about the violet, the purple eyes, and it it's not just her. It's other members of her family as well that have those uh, same sort of like physical characteristics that the Targaryens have as well, the silver hair and the purple eyes and their sigil, right? Is also very interesting. There's connections back as, as you were pointing out to me before we started the, the empire of the dawn all the way back to the beginning and the long night in Azora high. This is it's, it's kind of interesting. And we do forget sometimes that they're not just important to the beginning of our story and to Robert's rebellion, but to the end. Uh, and yeah, how and, to, and, and to perhaps the beginning of the entire thing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, where I was going to start today a little bit was with a character, uh, Edric Dane, right? Because mm -hmm. here's a guy who, you know, I mean, really, Edric Dane, regardless of any sort of theory you want to go down, even R plus L equals J. Edric Dane sort of makes no sense just as his own character, right? So Edric Dane, for those of you guys who don't know, he sort of shows he he's he's referenced to have been in events um, in like a Game of Thrones and a Clash of Kings. But really, we don't really meet him until A Storm of Swords. So Edric Dane, he's also known as Ned. He is technically the Lord of Starfall and of House Dane, right? We don't know who his father is. It's sort of an unnamed, sort of an unnamed Dane. Isn't character. that interesting? Yes. <laughs> um, but he is the uh, elderly brother. Uh, his father is Sir Arthur Dane's brother, right? As well as to Lady Ashara and Lady um, Illyria Dane, right? So by the time he shows up in A Storm of Swords, he's about 12 years old. He is described as having pale blonde hair and dark eyes that appear almost purple. He wears a pale purple cloak. He's kind of shy, good natured, very polite, and he's never killed anyone. So um, we learn a little bit about his history here. Right, He's born at Starfall in Dorne to Lo the unknown Lord Dane and his wife, right? Who we don't, we don't know who that is either. Um, you know, we know that we we come to find out, right, that Edric's mother did not have enough milk for him when he was born. So he was nursed by a wet nurse named Wyla, potentially the same name, right, as Jon Snow's actual mother. You know, we, at some point, Edric's told that Wyla was the mother of Eddard Stark's bastard, Jon Snow. When Edric was seven, he and his aunt Illyria, uh, his, his aunt, excuse me, was betrothed to Lord Beric Dundarian. 
right? And Edric goes to Blackhaven with Beric to serve as his page. Uh, and so then he'll end up actually being sort of Beric and Darian's squire. So um, while we don't see him, he's actually end up, we, we kind of hear that he was at certain events or things like that um, in a Game of Thrones, right? Um, where Beric and Darian is, is tasked to go take down the mountain with Ned Stark. Um, and then whatever. So we end up meeting him sort of in a storm of swords, right? That's when Arya is sort of captured or taken by the Brotherhood. Uh, she meets Lord Beric's young squire, names Ned, which is Eddard's name, right? Uh, she helps him uh, remove his breastplate. Um, she's, you know, sort of taken aback uh, by hearing the name Ned, which is the same as her father's. Ned brings Beric his his sword, surcoat, and shield before Beric fights the duel with Sandor Clegane, the Hound. After Beric is killed, Doris of Mir, sort of, you know, with Ned's help, resurrects him using the last kiss. Ned fights alongside Beric during, you know, some battles and stuff like that as well. So he actually ends up kind of talking to Arya, and we're given some information here. Uh, you know, though she's wary about her friend Gendry, um, right, uh, is scornful of their interactions. He tells her that he saw his, uh, her father and sister at the hands tourney, right? So Ned Stark and Sansa Stark, right? Ned tells Arya that uh, he and her half-brother Jon Snow are milk brothers. That is, you know, that his wet nurse, Wyla, who's been a servant of their family for years, is Jon Snow's mother, which is actually what we sort of hear Ned Stark say in that early conversation with Robert Baratheon, right? In like the beginning of Game mm -hmm. of Thrones. I think, yeah. I think it's in like episode two of the show too, right? Right. You know, sort of having food, hanging out. You know, is that it's John's mother and swears that this is uh, true on the honor of his house. So that is, you know, what he legitimately believes. When Arya asks who he is, Ned reveals that he's Lord Edric, Edric Dane. Ned tells Arya about his family, about how his aunt Ashara committed suicide over her broken heart. He is surprised that Eddard Stark never spoke of her. Um, he hesitantly tells Arya that his aunt Illyria told him that Ashara and Eddard fell in love at the tourney of Harrenhal. Arya is upset to hear that her father might have loved someone besides her mother, Catelyn. And though Edric tries to apologize, she does not want to hear it. Then we don't really have a lot much more of him going forward. We just know that after Beric and Darian's final death, Edric Dane and several members of Beric's band go their separate ways from those who choose to follow the resurrected, vengeful Lady Stoneheart. Um, and that's sort of where we leave him, right? Um, and then yep. there, so this is a character who's potentially and most likely influenced by actual outside sort of events in the writing is that we know that George was planning on at least at some point in his original sort of trilogy and, and stuff like that, he was planning on perhaps a time skip, like a two to three or four year, five, you know, up to five year time skip so that he could age some of these characters up. And that obviously didn't happen. And so some people believe that Gerald Dane as Dark Star is actually mm -hmm. going to fulfill some of the role, potential roles that were meant for Edric Dane. But before we move to Dark Star, um, I think we have to talk a little bit about Edric Dane here because he's such an interesting character in that, you know, there's so there's already so much stuff sort of surrounding, um, you know, like the Tower of Joy and Ned going to obviously going to Starfall to take back the Sword Dawn and um, take back uh, the body of Arthur Dane and then Ashara sort of commit suicide or at least and her body's never recovered and then you have a character who's named after ned stark yeah that's strange right that's strange so and then he's talking about so he's named after eddard he's also talking about eddard's air quote bastard son to aria all of that makes it like the proximity of that makes him interesting because he's named that he's the namesake essentially of, you know, uh, right. Ned Eddard. And I don't know, man, I, it, it's fascinating. So you mentioned that this time jump and I didn't, you know, I haven't really known much about that. So the idea is that maybe he was going to be more and then, then you roll in dark star, but not, it's like, what do you do with him now? Like, like, what do you do with this right. character who then just, rolls back to starfall and 
is too young to do oh, anything, no. or, or does he does he rise to power? Does he potentially, or or he gets replaced with whatever? Or maybe he was going to go into a different direction. Maybe he was going to go in sort of a darker direction, uh, which is where Darkstar uh, seems like he's going to kind of go. Um, and so, I mean, Darkstar is kind of a cruel dude, man. I mean, he's kind of out for blood. Yeah. Yeah, I think he has like a chip on his shoulder, the, you know, a lot to prove. And, and definitely um, there's a lot going on between him and, well, potentially will be, I guess, between he, he and Surveillance Juan and tricking the Martells. Um yeah, yeah, he's he's a dangerous guy as well. So I don't know where where that's going. I mean, some people that's a whole other winds of winter theory as well as is, is will he be killed? Um, Arya Hota is, is going down there to take him on with Obara Sand as well. So and they're escorting, I think, surveillance one down there. So yeah. you've got these individuals are hunting him. And we know I mean, again, we you know, Matt and I sometimes try to try, try to weave in what we saw on the show and say, ah, was any of that what George gave them? And so Hota being killed might, might, might be something by, by one of the sands if they want to do something different. I don't know. I, I just kind of find it uh, yeah. fascinating that like you have the, you have dark star. I don't think, I mean, I mean, I don't I, like when you read early on in storm of swords and stuff like that, he was going to take this young, innocent Ned Dane, who's never killed anybody and turn him into a dark star. You know, so right. that's kind of crazy to me. It's like a big curveball. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's one of the theories around it. And then. Maybe.